but <laughs> you can see. So this is a little American alligator. It's not a crocodile. Okay, here we go. Here's a couple more. In fact, one of them just flew. As a naturalist, I tend to think of every fishing trip as more of a marine biology lesson. Sure, I want to catch fish, but I get just as excited about what other animals live in this habitat, what the fish are eating, and what's eating them. But the first step is to get some bait. Now, we could buy bait, but it's a lot more fun to catch your own. And besides, the marsh is full of cool stuff. Man, these guys are quick, and you can see how they avoid being eaten by, you know, night herons and ibis and things like that. They're actually kind of hard to catch sometimes. And there's a really deep kind of a mud hole in the pluff mud right here. So I'm definitely gonna avoid that. But there's a lot of them in here. Man, fiddler crabs are really abundant. There could be huge, huge numbers. Sometimes as many as a million per acre. Another great way to catch bait is to use a minnow trap like this. It has funnels on both ends. I put some shrimp and some other bait in there. So what I'm gonna do is throw this down in the marsh and just see what gets in it and how fast it works. Now you can get minnow traps pretty much anywhere. So these are at, you know, hardware stores and pretty much anywhere on the coast is gonna have these minnow traps. So they're very inexpensive and it is a really, really great way to catch bait. The only thing is you gotta keep track of them. So what you don't want is for the rope to break off and for them to end up in the marsh because you don't want them catching things, you know, long after you have lost them. So you gotta be responsible with them for sure. So I guess we've been down there for about 30 seconds or so. So I'm gonna give it <laughs> like 10 more seconds and I'm gonna pull it out. Okay, I have a good feeling about this. So here we go. That is just amazing. And you can see how quickly this happened just in that short period of time. Look at the mummy chogs or mud minnows. So that little bit of bait, and there must be 30 or 40 in here. And these are great bait. Well, you can use these to catch red drum, flounder, all kinds of cool things. Okay, so we stopped at a different spot. I'm gonna see if we can catch some different bait here. Wow. So lots of stuff here. Looks like primarily, well, there's some shrimp in here. There's all kinds of neat stuff. Well, let's grab a couple of these and put them in put them in the bucket and we'll look at them each one individually. Okay, let me show you what we have here. We have, we've got a bunch of these. This is a little Atlantic Menhaden. You can tell by that spot right there. Of course, this is still a youngster and really, really important fish in the Atlantic food chain. I mean, these make up just a tremendous amount of biomass. They're critically, critically important. And a lot of things eat Menhaden for sure. So that's one. Let's see what else we have here. Some of these are hard to catch, but let's go ahead and go with this guy. Not a fish, of course, but a, a shrimp. And this particular one's called a white shrimp. And one of the ways I can tell is look how long the antennae are. They're twice the length of the body. A brown shrimp would have much more shorter antennae and look Looks slightly different, be a darker color and a couple other things, but definitely white shrimp. We're gonna keep this one. This is excellent bait. Uh, looks like a mullet in here. And let's see, and a silver perch. So this is one of the drum and silver. I can hear it kind of drumming a little bit. And these don't get very big. They only get about that long. One of the smaller drum species that we have. Uh, quite common, uh, especially in these, these saltwater impoundments. Wow, all kinds of stuff in here. Oh, neat, neat. So we got the usual suspects, lots of Manhaden, a mullet, but I saw something in here that really, I got really excited about. I'm gonna go ahead and get some of these fish back in. This is just a lot of action. And some of these we've already seen. Okay, let's look at some of these that we held on to. First one is a ladyfish. So this is its own family, a lopidae. And it's a really cool fish, very elongate. It's a predator, of course. 
you can just tell by looking at the mouth, huge mouth. Terminal mouth, which means it's sort of right on the end here, and big mouth for catching and eating other fish. Powerful tail, good jumper. So if you catch a big one, these can be two feet long or bigger, you know, they jump a lot, almost like mini tarpon. So that's kind of cool. We've got a little spot right here. That's in the croaker family. You can tell by that spot right there. And this is one of those that makes kind of that drumming noise with the sonic muscles. So lots of these. Uh, people can eat these. I mean, they only get about this long or so, so they're small, but very good to eat. And the other thing that I got so excited about was this one right here. There's actually a couple of these. Leather jacket, and it's, it's a jack. Very, very fast fish, and there's really impressive spines on it too. And of course, it's a predator, big mouth, very fast moving, and very slimy. You know, they don't have those big thick scales like a mullet or something else would. And bright yellow tail. You know, maybe this is to deflect the tension um, away from the head to predators. You know, it's hard to know for sure. And this is a fish that you don't see real often, but there's certainly lots of them out there. So different types of fish require slightly different strategies for catching them. So today we're after sheep's head, and sheep's head love structure. So they like dock pilings and things like that, things that are covered with oysters and have lots of crabs around. So what we're gonna do is use a rig like this. There's actually, I'm gonna use two different kinds. This one has fairly light line, a fluorocarbon leader, and then it's got a number one hook, a circle hook, and then a sliding weight. So the way this works is the weight kind of sits in the bottom, and this part can slide up and down. There are a couple of good things about this. If the hook breaks off, you get your weight back and the poor fish doesn't have to drag the, the weight around. And then the other thing is the fish is less likely to feel the tug of the weight and get scared away. Now, another rig we're gonna use is very similar, but slightly different. It's even lighter weight. And this has just a little split shot on it. And the idea is gonna to be to just kind of hang off the dock and just sit this next to a dock piling kind of go up and down from the bottom all the way up to the surface. And hopefully there's a sheep's head waiting around that piling. And then what they really like to eat is fiddler crabs. That's their favorite bait. So that's what we're gonna to use today. Okay, I think the next step is to put some bait on these hooks and see what we can catch. So sheep's head have a really subtle bite. I can feel just a little tapping. And what people always say is you need to set the hook right before they bite. Okay, I've got something. It doesn't look very big. So this looks like another little fish that frequents docks. This is a pig fish. And they're pretty fish. They are really, really nice. Of course, grunt family, because they make kind of a grunting noise a lot of times when you catch them. And this is a little guy. They get way bigger than this, for sure. This one was making that grunt noise for a second. I mean, what a, what a neat noise. Okay, I'm gonna just very carefully drop it back. Okay, I got something. Not sure what this is, but it is a scroll. It is a little sheep's head. Boy, a cutie. Boy, that is a little guy though. So these have to be 14 inches long before you can keep them. And of course, we're not gonna keep them anyway. We just wanted to catch one so we could get a look at it. But sheep's head, couple things you notice. Look at the spines on it. Man, they have spectacular spines. And they're a member of the porgy family. The other thing is look at that vertical banding. And that vertical banding really helps them to blend in with vertical structure, things like dog pilings. But the coolest thing about these guys is the teeth. Let me pop this hook out. But look at those teeth. And I'm gonna be careful that it, I don't get my hands in there because they have crushing teeth. In fact, the teeth look almost human-like. And so what they do is eat barnacles and crabs and stuff. So they have the equipment to crunch them up and they can actually go around to dock pilings and just crunch away at the barnacles that are, that are on the pilings underwater. 
great little fish. So as a naturalist, not only do I like seeing the sheep's head, but I like thinking about the entire natural history. I like the fact that, you know, we see fiddler crabs in the marsh. Some of those fiddler crabs end up in deeper water and are eaten by sheep's head. So it's, you know, it's really about the habitat when you think about it. Not just the filler crabs, not just the sheep's head, but kind of the relationship between them. This is one of my favorite fish. For sure. So we're getting ready to head out on the boat, but I thought I would throw a net and see if we can get a little bit more bait. Oh my. <laughs> Look at this! Sheep's head, great big sheep's head. So just trying to catch some bigger bait, and boy, we had a time trying to catch sheep's head off the dock, and here we are, just got two in a cast net. And boy, these are nice sized ones too. Wow! It just goes to show, I mean, you, you just, if you get a chance, you just, you never know what you're gonna get in a cast net or on a fishing line or whatever. Wow, I'm gonna do. Actually, I think I'm going to let one of these go. There we go. Okay, there goes that one. But look at this guy. So, careful of the spines. Man, what a fish this is. Look at those cool teeth. So again, this is the animal that feeds on dock pilings and will eat barnacles and things like that. Wicked spines. Look at these spines. And of course, the vertical banding really helps them with hiding in structure and things like that. Delicious to eat, by the way. A lot of people love to eat sheep's head. So <laughs> we had a little bit of trouble catching them with the fiddler crabs on a fishing line, but just one throw of the cast net got us two. Okay, I'm gonna get this little guy back in. There we go, perfect. So we've caught some pretty good stuff, but the next place where we're gonna go, we have to use a boat to get there. Look at the gulls right here. These are laughing gulls. It looks like they've already lost that summer coloration. Boy, there's a bunch of them on that dock. So guys, we got a, there's a plastic bag here. I just want to pick this up because this could really be a hazard to certain things. Let's see if I can get to it. So. A plastic bag like this can do a lot of damage. Uh, things like sea turtles, marine mammals, all kinds of stuff can choke on this. So if you ever see stuff like this when you're out fishing or out in the marsh, pick it up. So what we have is the, the tide is going out. So what I'm trying to do is find some structure so that we can fish just over the lip of some structure. And that way, predator fish can kind of hang out out of the current, out of the tide, and then ambush bait that kind of funnels over that structure. So I'm gonna put about three rods out. I think any more than that is. It could get exciting. Sometimes it's exciting with even two. Okay, so we already got a good bite. I don't think it's on there anymore, but that was a good tug. And that was a ladyfish. Here's another one over here. Here's a good one. Okay, we got something big on. It's maybe a tarpon. It's a tarpon. Wow. Okay, we gotta, we gotta get another line in. Oh my gosh, beautiful tarpon. Okay, so what I gotta do Good jumps. Oh my gosh. So what you got, one of the things I got to do is not pull too hard. Oh, he's off. Oh my gosh. That was unbelievable. <laughs> Guys, that was a five, six foot fish. So, you know, we'll try again, but I don't know if we're going to get another shot at that. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay, 
Okay, we got, looks like we have something on here. Not sure what this is. <laughs> Barely got these rods out and there's already lots of excitement here. This feels pretty good. It's not huge, but it feels, feels interesting. Oh, it's a shark. Looks like a little Atlantic sharp nose, probably. Boy, there's a nice little run at the end there. Look at that good looking little shark. He's hooked on the side of the mouth right here. And I'll pop this out. There we go. Let's take a look at it. So Atlantic sharp nose. And this is a almost an adult shark, not quite. It has some more growing to do, but you can tell it's got those wonderful white spots on it and a really long sharp nose. That's where the name comes from. Now, one of the things about sharks is they feel really rough, especially if you push them the opposite way. And that's because the dermal denticles are, you know, they're just almost like little teeth on the skin of the shark. I'm gonna put this one back in because it looks like we're getting a bite, but I make sure this one's fine before I, so make sure it's in good shape. And there we go, perfect. Okay, let's see what's going on here. Boy, this is good fishing. There's just a lot going on today. This feels like a shark. I'm feeling head shakes. Not a particularly big one, but. There it is. And it looks like my favorite shark. Boy, I love this species. There we go. Look at that good looking shark. So this is a bonnet head, hammerhead family. Okay, we got the hook out. Now I'm using circle hooks because they really work well at not gut hooking fish. So we really like circle hooks for sure. I'm just gonna give this guy just a quick breath, a couple of breaths. Let's take a look at this one. So bonnet head, again, hammerhead family. You can see that characteristic bonnet head. And boy, look at the huge tail, big dorsal fin. You know, that whole hammerhead family has big dorsals for sure. And you know, a great hammerhead is just ridiculous how tall it is. So I'm gonna let this one go. Make sure it's doing fine and it's gone. Guys, if you look right over my shoulder, there's a whole group of oyster catchers right there. Really good looking little bird, great orange bills, and real kind of a pleasing call too. Now we're not gonna get any closer because we don't, we don't want to disturb them. Oyster catchers use these shell islands like this. It's really important nesting habitat for them. Now they're not nesting right now, but it's just a place where they can kind of uh, sit down and rest. But really, really nice bird and you know, this is the kind of thing when you're out fishing, this is the kind of stuff to notice. I mean, you're not out there just to catch fish, you're out there to experience the habitat. Got another little guy on. Boy, little, another sharp nose. Lots of sharks around is a good thing because sharks equal a healthy ecosystem. Boy, it's time to tie a new knot here. Look at how frayed that line is. And that's from the teeth of these small sharks. Uh, they can actually damage the line with the those dermal denticles on their body, but I'm sure that's from teeth rubbing across that. <laughs> Black tips are unbelievable. <laughs> they are one of the toughest little sharks you will ever see. Sort of like the perfect shark, shark shape. Whoa. Guys, if you look right here, there's a great big alligator, an adult, maybe an adult female. And I was looking to see if it has a tag on it because we, we actually have been involved in some research where we tag alligators. We put plastic tags in the tail and it doesn't appear to be. But here we are out in salt water. I mean, we're out well away from really anything. And alligators do go in salt water. In fact, they'll go from island to island and sometimes move big distances through salt water. They do have to get into fresh water and get rid of that salt though. They don't have salt glands like, you know, crocodiles do, for instance. I 
think it may be a redfish. Oh man, that is a nice fish. There we go. It's drumming. You can hear that wonderful drumming noise. And God, that's a, that's a neat sound. Look at the big spot on the tail. And this was on mullet, big chunk of mullet. But it's a pretty big fish. So these get even bigger. So this is a nice size one, but really big ones, you know, can be 40 inches long or more. Beautiful fish. Nice sort of iridescent shine to the scales. So this is a completely different ecosystem. Fish that live here have to deal with waves and the swash zone and huge changes in uh, tidal amplitude. And you know, the fish aren't everywhere. They're in the troughs, the run along the beach, they're in the deep spots. So our challenge is to get our bait where the fish are. Now we have some bait left over. Let's give it a try and see what we can find. Looks like we have a bite on this one. Well, it's hard to get out of the rod holder. I can't tell if it, yeah, I feel it. Something's on it. Doesn't feel very big, but there's something on here. Oh, little guy. Living here in the surf. Good looking little shark. Now sharks can be really tough to identify, um, especially the smaller species and the other thing to realize is we have a lot of small sharks that live in the surf at the beach, but these pose no danger to anybody. Uh, they're just being sharks and eating fish and they're just part of the ecosystem. Oh, here's something kind of neat. If you look right here, this is, I think it's alive too. It is. I can see these little tube feet moving. So this is, a lot of people call these sand dollars. Uh, keyhole urchins, another good name for it. Uh, really, really interesting little animal. It's really, a, it's really an urchin. Keyhole urchin is a pretty good name for it because it's an echinoderm and Sand dollar is just one of those common names that really stuck, but I can tell that it's alive because I can see these little tube feet moving. And that's not only how they move their bodies, but they can also get little pieces of uh, fish and little or piece of organic material and actually move it to the mouth where they can feed on it. Really, really neat animal. Perfectly okay to keep, you know, a dead one of these, but you don't want to keep a live one. I mean, this is one we want to put right back in, let it go. Like maybe something on here. That one of the tough things about surf fishing is because of the waves and the heavy weights you have to use, sometimes it's hard to tell. Yeah, there's something on here. I don't think it's very big, but something. The other thing is these lines are so far out. You know, they're 100 yards out. So. Boy, look at that. Now this is, a, this is actually a really, really neat catch. This is one of the catfish, obviously, and I'm being super careful of these spines because that's this looks like a gaff top sail cat, and this is a species that we're really kind of concerned about. But boy, they have wicked spines. What's interesting about these catfish is the numbers of these decreased a great deal, and they've made a real comeback. I'm sorry, it's hard to concentrate when the, there's a bite on this other rod. So we're gonna pop this guy back in and uh, let it go. Guys, we were just walking down the beach and I saw something fly and right over my shoulder, I think it's a peregrine falcon. Now peregrine falcons feed on all kinds of shorebirds and so what they do is patrol the edges and of course they're spectacular flyers and they can come down and ambush those, you know, little peeps and you know, shorebirds and things like that. And so I'll bet you that's what that, that animal's doing. Okay, 
Okay, yeah, one of the spots I want to get my bait to is out here about 100 yards or so. So I've got a surf rod, which is a much, much longer rod. But this one, I think, is 13 feet long. And this is just an enormous catapult and allows you to sling the bait 100 yards or more. So I'm going to wait out, see how far I can throw it, see if I can hit that spot, and then bring it back up and put it in the sand spike. And we just hope something exciting swims by. Got one on. Okay, so I got a fish on. I've got about a million yards of line. So, <laughs> and plus I can run down the beach too. But it doesn't feel that big. Guys, it looks like a shark. I see a little dorsal fin. It's not a big one. Looks like a bonnet head. Nice little fish. It's kind of fun having the surf. The surf will just kind of bring them in for you. But so this is a bonnet head. And bonnet heads are, of course, get their name because of that wonderful bonnet-shaped head. Let me see if I can get. OK, so you notice you got the hook out. And I really like to get the hooks out on sharks. I mean, it's a little inconvenient sometimes but I th really think we need to do this. If you gut hook a fish, it may not make it. Guys, obviously really cool fish. We've caught some wonderful fish today, but just remember, these fish can't survive without clean water, quality habitat, and all the things that go with that. And also remember, you don't have to travel to other parts of the world to see amazing things. There's lots of cool animals right here in the Low Country. Thanks for joining us for Coastal Kingdom.